Welcome to our next lecture video. This time we are going to be talking about setting up Sphinx documentation, in particular generating API documentation for classes and modules that you may have written. So to start out, I have this Sphinx docs directory that has my array.py that I took from assignment three. So I have my array class with various methods that aren't defined, but they have doc strings. There's a doc string for the module itself. And there's one class here, the array class, and there's also one function here the as array function. So to get started with Sphinx, so Sphinx is a tool for documentation that is widely used in the Python community. It's not specific to Python, but it is written in Python and it is used to document most Python packages. So to start, we create a docs directory. So make their docs and then CD in there. And then we run a command called Sphinx quick start. And this asks a few questions and we can go through with the defaults. So What's our project name? We'll call it my array, author name, IN3110, release stuff we don't need. It's gonna be in English. All right, so now if we look in the docs directory, there are various files in here, but the most important ones for us are conf.py. This is the configuration for Sphinx itself and index.rst. This is our first document. So if we open index.rst, we can see there's a welcome to our documentation, some comments, and some commands that are called directives. So there's two sections. There's this heading for welcome to the documentation and then some heading for indices and tables of the docs. So now that we've done Sphinx Quick Start, we can run make HTML to render our docs as HTML. And now the HTML pages are in underscore build slash HTML. So we can open that. And then here's our index, that's our default page. And we can open that file, open build HTML index.html. And then we'll put that over here. So there's not a lot, there's just the headings. And then there's an index and a module index, and there's not a lot there because we haven't filled our documentation. The next file of interest is conf.py. And this is the configuration for Sphinx itself. So this is where we say install extensions, change configuration values like the project name, you know, the title of our documentation, the author and copyright things, etc. So because we want to document our modules, the first thing we're going to do is load an extension called autodoc. So we add to the extensions list Sphinx fills out conf.py with a bunch of placeholders so that you can add things. You don't have to write it from scratch. This was all created by the Sphinx quick start command. So I can say load the autodoc extension. This comes with Sphinx itself. And now we've loaded the autodoc extension. And because I'm working in JupyterLab, I'm also going to add a directory to be excluded at the ipynb checkpoints. This isn't important. It'll just silence some warnings that aren't particularly interesting. So now we have the autodoc extension loaded. So just like we did in Python, we can do import my array, my array question mark, and that shows us the doc string and my array array. We can see the doc string of the array constructor. So just like we have those, autodoc finds the same information that we find in MyPython and can generate a uh, nice HTML documentation from that. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna make a new file called api.rst. The name isn't important, but it should end with rst. And we're going to give it a heading. So we're gonna say my array api, and then we're gonna use a directive. So that's one of these commands that starts with two dots. And we're gonna use auto module and so this is the name of our module, my array. And so what this is gonna do is automatically document our module. So it's gonna find and import my array and look for a doc string and generate some documentation. So now we can make HTML again, and we got two warnings. The more important warning is that it failed to import my array. So there's no module named my array. And the second warning is that the new document we created isn't in the top tree. We're gonna deal with that one first. Sphinx tries to help you have nice documentation. So top tree, the TOC stands for table of contents. It wants you to be able to navigate clicking through links and table of contents and things. And if it finds any documents that aren't included in any table of contents list, it gives you a warning. It doesn't prevent it from building or anything, but it encourages you to include things in the table of contents. So what we do is in this talk tree directive, we add two empty lines and we add our new document api.rst. So now we can make HTML again. So now we've solved the talk tree warning. We still have the import warning. And now if we refresh our index page, we can see in the contents, now we have a link to my array API. It's an empty document, so there's not anything here other than the heading, but it's been added to the table of contents. So the next step is to make my array importable. Now, if your package is a real Python package that's installable, this isn't an issue. You install the package and it will just work. But because we just have a single file, what we wanna do is add this directory to sys.path. And this is common enough that the conf.py includes a placeholder for doing this. So we can uncomment this section, say import OS, and then add, what this does is it adds the docs directory to path, but what we really want is the parent of that. So we just want two dots. And now if we make HTML again, and there's no warnings, and we can refresh this page. And here we have defines an array class, 
class template for arrays from assignment three. And if we look back at my array, we can see that's actually the contents of the doc string for the module. So what auto module does is it loads the, it loads the doc string for the module itself. So going back and editing api.rst, now we want to document what's in that module. The first thing we're going to do is document that as array function. So now we can use auto function, save that and build again. And now we can refresh our build of api.html. And now we have myarray.asarray and we can get the signature and we can get a link to it. And it generates documentation, including the doc string for our function. That's pretty handy. And now the main thing that we're interested in documenting is the array class. So we go back and then our api.rst and we add auto class. And with the class name, it's array. Build again. And now we've got the function and we've also got the class with the class doc string. But what we're really interested in is all the methods and, and attributes on the array. And so by default, auto class just gets the doc string, but there's an option called members that says, show me when you're documenting this class, also find its member methods and things. So now if we build the docs again and refresh, our output, we have our class, and we also have all of the public methods. So this doesn't include the hidden and private methods and things. But now we can see the methods and their signatures. So this one takes an argument other, these don't take any argument. But because in assignment three, we were mostly talking about defining the special methods, the dunder methods, double underscore, add, sub, mul, etc. Maybe what we want here is to include the documentation of these special methods. Auto class also takes an option called special members, which gets us all those special double underscore methods like add equals so we can see which ones are defined, how they work, what they're supposed to return. So that's the basics of auto-generating API documentation. The last really useful thing is we're going to go back to our Sphinx configuration, our conf.py, and add one more extension. So all of the methods in the template array class have this structure. If we look at those doc strings, they have the structure of args and then the name of an argument and then parentheses and a colon. So these are in a spe special format and there's a plugin that understands this format called Napoleon, also comes with Sphinx. So it's under sphinx.ext for extensions. So Napoleon understands that format and gives it some special formatting. So if we add Napoleon to the extensions and build again, then we reload. And now we get some nice highlighting of the argument names and the types and where the types are known, then you get links to those class definitions. So if these were other types, you can say this returns an array, we click that and you get a link to array. So if you have multiple classes defining different types and one returns things to the other, you can say, oh, this returns that type. I would like a link with more information about the type that this returns. And that's getting set up with Sphinx documentation for APIs. And there's lots of useful tips about restructured text in the Sphinx documentation, and there's links in the lecture notes.